I can't imagine a world that's not full of animals. Every day I see birds and I hear animals all around us and it makes my life rich. And I think for all of us, animals are part of what makes life so magical on this planet. It's a really important thing and it's what makes us human. The animals are important to me because they don't have a voice. So we have to do everything that we can to ensure that you know, they don't have to be worried or stressed. Animals are important to me because they make me happy. All of my activities when I'm um, relaxing or looking for um, fun things to do revolve around animals. I really feel that they impact on people's day-to-day -day lives in a positive way and we can really learn a lot about ourselves as well as animals just by being around them and interacting with them. So animal welfare means to me providing the best you can to an animal, so ensuring that they're you know, not stressed or worried about anything, ensuring they've got enough food, water and shelter, and also that they get um, vet treatment if they need it, if they're sick or injured. So this is Henry. Um, he was seized underweight with lots of worms um, with some other horses as well. RSPCA uh, took action against the owner. Uh, Henry now has put on lots of weight. Um, that was many years ago and is now part of the education team here at the, the RSPCA living out his life in a nice green paddock. When we look after animals or have animals in our care, they rely on us as humans for a lot of the things that happen in their lives. And for me, animal welfare is about the life that that animal's living. And so I understand that animals have emotions and feelings. They're experiencing a life. And it's up to us to make sure that that's a positive experience. And so providing animal welfare is about understanding the experience of each and every individual and making sure that that experience is as amazing as it could be, that it's a positive experience. A lot of that in reptile keeping is creating a natural environment, trying to stimulate all those natural behaviours. But it's not just about giving them everything they need physically, like heat, UV rays and food and all that sort of stuff. The challenge is really trying to challenge the animals themselves, both mentally and physically, and getting all those natural behaviours trying to get them to do the things that they would do out in the wild, not making everything too easy for them, just a bit of a challenge. One way that people can think about animal welfare is to put themselves in the paws of their pets. Thinking about the animal's life from the animal's perspective, so making decisions that are in the best interest of the individual animal. I think we should care for animals in the environment because we need to. It's, it's not really a matter of want anymore, it's, it's a matter of surviving as a species because humans are just one single species in this entire system of complex interactions with other species. We're intrinsically linked, so there's lots of dependency on animals for food, for companionship. The environment gives us the air we breathe, the water we drink and if we're not going to look after it, then it's not going to be there for us for now or for the future. Animals and interaction with animals make us better humans. Companion animals are just a wonderful way of uh, exploring empathy and understanding and being able to step outside of yourself to know a little bit more and to take that care about another creature. So we've done a lot of research on all the different species that live with us and we've got some really cool examples of animals that are thriving in their zoo environments. Um, some examples of these are meerkats, ringtail lemurs, They're, those guys are always very interactive and engaging in positive social interactions. Our giant tortoises are also doing really well. They love their keepers and have favourite keepers that they get scratches and things from and sometimes they come right up to the visitor barrier to have an, an interaction with visitors as well. A lot of people think that reptiles are not too much going on upstairs, but um, once you get to know them, that there is actually a lot more to do with them. Some of the things that we've been doing more so in the reptile house, uh, we've got a swim gym, which is like a hydroponic pool that actually has a really strong current. We'll put our snakes and lizards in there, the turtles, and actually have to swim against the current, which is replicating like a natural stream system. <laughs> When you think about a giant tortoise, for example, out in the wild, they don't come across a little platter of food on the ground. Um, they would actually normally eat low-hanging fruits and leaves off the trees. So to try and replicate that, we've started to raise most of their food off the ground. So we designed these new feeder trees, 
that um, food actually hangs off bits of rope and it just makes it a lot more of a challenging experience for them to get the food. Some of our first experiences with pets is when we're young kids. I you know, fondly remember all of my family pets while I was growing up. And in my work here at the RSPCA, I can see that, that spark of, of life that you see in your own pets. You can see it in pretty much any pet or wildlife animal or companion animal or livestock animal. It's the same thing. So we should always be treating all animals with love and respect. Every day now, every year, we're learning more about animals. I heard a month ago that butterflies fight. Now, if butterflies can fight, well, that just changes the whole world of our understanding of what's important to butterflies. As we learn more, we know that we have to do better and give them more opportunities. And so what good zoos are doing is never being comfortable with the care they give their animals. Every single month, we learn more, and every single month, we apply that knowledge to looking after our animals better. And after today, you're going to have learnt about animal welfare. You may go home to a dog or a cat or a bird at home. You need to think about what did I learn today and how can I use that to make sure my animal's life is better. And that's what we have to do each and every day.